This vlog is about contribution. What is contribution, you might ask? Our world is so full of what I call give and take. There is so much taking that goes on with people from the earth, with people from other people. We tend to run on this sense of lack rather than that we are a gift and we are a contribution and that the universe is an abundant space and place. So this is a vlog about the universe being an abundant space and place. And I'm gonna talk about two different forms of contribution. I have been blessed by having really dynamic business acumen and I have been able to generate and create and earn quite a lot of money over the years to the point where I was like, what am I gonna do with all this money? Like why? I'm one of those people like, okay, so now that I've got all this money, what do I do with it? So this huge aha moment that I had came a couple of years ago in an access class when they announced something called Forest for Futures. And essentially what Forest for Futures is, is a fund for reforestation of this large plot of land in Costa Rica called El Lugar. Um, if you wanna see more about El Lugar, it's a couple vlogs ago we did one. A lot of Costa Rica, like the rest of the world has been deforested for cattle grazing. And so what's occurring right now is with Forest for Futures is the reforestation process. And when that got announced, I was like some massive circuit connected for me because when I was like 23, 24, I was at this Right Riches for You class that my dad was facilitating in Santa Barbara, California. And at that point in my life, I was a total righteous hippie and I kind of like hated money, even though I wasn't consciously thinking like, I hate money, but all my energy and attitude about money was just always resentful. It was like, why do we have to have money? Money sucks. Like money is the reason the earth is being destroyed. So I go into this right riches for you class with that attitude and my dad's like, it's like, what if you having money would allow you to buy all of the, you know, endangered rainforests? And that was the first time in my adult life I had ever put the two together that money could, yes, be used for destruction, but money could also be used for generating and creating the kind of world I wanted to live in. So fast forward to maybe a year and a half, two years ago, they announced this Forest for Futures project and it's like, I came full circle. And I was like, oh my God, that's why I've been making money all these years, for 20 years, that's why I've been earning money, was to be able to contribute to the earth and for the trees, especially for me as a massive inspiration and to be a generative source of contribution financially and also non-financially. And I'll talk about the non-financial ways to contribute after I talk about the financial ways to contribute. So something that I've done is committed to contributing money to organizations that are doing the work. You know, they're out there doing the work, planting the trees, protecting the rhinoceroses, creating coral nurseries to reestablish coral reef. Like there's so many people and organizations around the world really on the ground doing amazing things. So this is something that I wanted to talk about as the angle of contribution. And this isn't that you should contribute. This isn't like you should do this. This is just something that I think is really awesome. So I'm gonna talk about some of the organizations that I currently contribute to. Um, and these are just ones that have crossed my path. They're ones that sort of feel right to me. Um, and that's why I've chosen them. And I would love for you guys out there watching this who know about other organizations who are, you know, really contributing to the thriving and the vertification and the health of the earth. I'd love if you'd post all of those below. I'd love to see what else is out there and what can we all create together knowing that it's a gift to receive from the earth and to be a contribution because you are a gift and we do not have to suffer a dismal fate. We, each and every one of us holds a key in our being, but more on that in the second half of the video. So. Some of the cool organizations that I have found and love, a lot of them you can find on Instagram and actually that's where I did find a lot of these. So essentially I'm on subscription with some of them, one-off payment for others of them and it's sort of different based on how they've set up their commerce. Some of them I think need some help <laughs> setting themselves up for better subscription options. Um, so if you do end up connecting with them, you could always make some suggestions as I have done to how they could improve their purchaseability so that people who wanna get involved and wanna contribute, that's really easy. So the first one and the most recent one that I've started contributing to on a monthly subscription basis is called Half Cut. This one is based in Australia 
and they are an organization who is essentially like restoring but also protecting the Daintree Forest, which is the oldest rainforest in the world. So that's in Australia and they take a UD and I just contribute to them every month because they're actually taking care of the trees in ways that I'm not on the ground doing. So if they're doing it, I am totally going to contribute to them. Now here's another one that isn't a organization that is asking for donations or support for their services, but it's something called Ecosia, which is a search engine that uses 80% of its revenue to reforest. And I've been using Ecosia for maybe nearly a year, give or take. And on my Ecosia page, it says I have planted 580 trees and they're super interesting. They're based in Berlin. Um, if you're not using Ecosia right now, I highly recommend you install Ecosia as your main search engine on your phone and on your computer. Full disclosure, it's not as like dynamic as Google yet, but they're constantly improving. And the more people that use Ecosia, the better their searches get. So. It's a pretty amazing and easy way to directly contribute to people who are planting trees and they have all sorts of amazing partners and projects in all sorts of places. You can read all about what they're doing and all of these organizations will be of course linked below. One of the other ones that I contribute to is called Care for the Wild Rhinoceros Sanctuary and they're in South Africa and Care for the Wild Rhinoceros Sanctuary, if you ever see this, it would be really awesome if you would make it easier for people to subscribe to ongoing contributions to your organization because you're doing something that I absolutely love and admire and believe in and want to contribute to and it's not that easy to figure out how to give you guys money. So if you are going to check them out, just, you know, you're going to have to kind of figure out, they process in South African Rand, so you're going to have to do your exchange rates and figure out how much you want to contribute per month and do all that on their website. The next one is called Coral Gardeners and they are based in French Polynesia and they are actually establishing and nurturing coral nurseries and then going and replanting or planting the coral from the nurseries to add to sustain and to reestablish the coral reefs that are in <laughs> dynamic decline in the oceans. And so the coral reef is obviously a massive contribution to the health of the ocean. It is necessary for the health of the ocean and I'm not gonna shout out any completely depressing statistics, <laughs> but it's important that we contribute to the reefs so these people are actually like in the ocean, literally nurturing their coral nurseries and then taking it and planting those. It's super interesting and super dynamic what they're doing. Also coral gardeners, if you ever watch this, it would be great if you guys could make it easier to subscribe to an ongoing uh, donation on your guys' website because I haven't seen that option. It's sort of like a one-off purchase, which I don't think is enough because I would love to contribute way more to what you guys are doing. Now, this next one is one that many of you might have actually seen because their promotion is super on point and they're all over Instagram and Facebook and they're called Four, the number four ocean. And what they do is for every $10 or every dollar, I'm dyslexic, don't hold me to it, it's a dollar or $10. For every dollar or $10 that you contribute, they pull a pound of plastic out of the ocean and then use that to make other things like bags and building materials and shoes and all sorts of amazing things. They're really easy to contribute to. They've set up their commerce really well. They're really easy to subscribe to donation. So for Ocean, it's super easy to contribute to them. And of course, who wants to go walking on a beach that is choked by plastic? And the final one, that organization that obviously I can actually contribute the most to financially and energetically is Forest for Futures. It's obviously sort of like one of the sub projects at the larger El Ugar property. It's going to be linked below as well to how to contribute to that. So in the second vlog that Max and I made, we went and visited the reforestation area in El Ugar. Um, they'll be linked below. It's just another project and I know they're going on like all over the world. There are many, many organizations and people who are reforesting. And of course, these aren't the only ones that I think are worth it. They're just the ones that have crossed my path and the ones that are easy for me to contribute. I contribute anywhere from $150 to thousands of dollars a month to these organizations, depending on their subscriptions. And obviously, Forest for Futures gets 5% of my entire business's annual income. That's my tithing to gifting because I am so fortunate. 
those are some of the cool people out there and organizations that are doing the work to <laughs> contribute to the earth. If you know that you can gift or contribute anything, like do. Even $5 a month is this different energy stream. It's this different commitment. It's this gifting. It's you being a gift. Now to the section about contributing and gifting beyond money. I don't think that we should exclude money from the conversation. And I do also want to include this other aspect, which is that all of our thoughts, our beliefs, I'm just going to simplify it to thoughts. Everything that we think has an energetic impact. Everything in the universe is made of energy. This is not airy fairy, woo woo, new age stuff. This is scientific. Everything is made of energy. And the way that we think, if we're being conscious or if we're choosing unconsciousness, that impacts every molecule in the universe. And I need to state that your point of view is number one impact beyond everything. Meaning, your headspace, what you think, how you choose to believe, what you choose is like, you, you have complete authority over that in your life. You don't have to think in a certain way, you choose to think and believe in the ways that we do. And so what's super awesome is to play around with how you can include molecular awareness in the way that you live your life. Meaning, what if every time that you like judge your body, for example, you're communicating this very destructive energy towards the molecules of your body, but since everything is connected energetically, you are then also communicating that judgment to the molecules of the planet. Our bodies are incredibly connected with the earth. I mean, when I say incredibly, I'm trying to emphasize the word connected because we tend to function as though we are separate from the earth or sentient from the earth or more right than the earth, none of which is true. Like without the earth, we don't have bodies. <laughs> so without our bodies, the earth would thrive. So the earth is our big body and our little bodies are directly in communication and connection with the earth. And so every time you judge your body, just as an example, you're literally rejecting the contribution that the earth is for giving you life in a body. And if you just like stop judging your body, like maybe 10% less, <laughs> like that would actually be a really substantial lightening of the earth's load. Is it possible that the more you allow your body, enjoy your body, have joy with your body, you receive the contribution of the earth and a happy body is in return a contribution and so when you look at it like this happiness allowance being aware of judgment choosing not to judge questioning the way you think has a massive impact on what we contribute we can contribute our judgments to the world or we can contribute our joy which energy makes the earth thrive more judgment or joy so in this way you can also be a contribution. What can you contribute? Please recognize that you are a contribution. Even if you, you know, believe that you are horrible deep in your core, you know, it's like so many of us walk around knowing. We don't even believe it. We like know it, that we're wrong. Like deep in our core, we're wrong, that we are defective, that if anybody ever saw us, we would, you know, it would be horrible and we'd be outcast and we'd hurt everybody and we're wrong, 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 wrong. Guess what? You can be wrong and you can still be great. You can still be a contribution and then hopefully eventually the gift of your being might win out over the irrelevance of judging yourself. If everybody on the earth prioritized being grateful for what is contributed to our lives, to our bodies, and prioritized never eroding the gift that we be. What a different world would we live in. Who and what is contributing to you, your body, your life? Are you receiving it? What 
contribution can you be? It isn't about giving, it has everything to do with gifting with no expectation and total ease. Thanks guys. Thank you.